keep you guys abreast of what's going on. It's good timing. And I kind of held this one off because I was waiting for this move to get down to these levels. Now, one of the things that I've noticed is that people like to mess with my trades. They just do. A few of you. Uh, and you know what? That's okay. Just understand that you are taking responsibility for not getting the exact executions or orders that I get. And um, that's just a risk that you face. And I have no problem with it. You know, you can use me as like a guide and uh, somebody who um, maybe has a good understanding of what the market dynamics are to a, a pretty finite degree. And that's acceptable. But understand that risk. If you're not do executing the orders or letting the bot trade exactly um, for what it does, then you might not get the same results that I get. Um, you might get better. Uh, you know, there, there is that opportunity as well, right? Um, but do understand that. All right, so I got the chart up here, and I want to draw this for you because it's pretty much played out. And I do understand. I'm going to show you that I don't know. I don't predict the future as I have stated. And I know people would like to believe I'm Nostradamus and give me credit to such a degree, which I appreciate, but I'm really not. Uh, you know, I am just giving you the probabilities of what I've seen occur in the past in many different markets over many years. And I am not Nostradamus. I'm just a guy that has a pretty good understanding of what the probabilities are of what we're looking at. And sometimes I don't even do that good of a job. Sometimes I do an amazing job. Um, but right now, where we are, we're within this scenario right here. And what we'd be looking for is a move all the way back up to that 66, 6700 area up here. And it's kind of convoluted because look at that spike here. You got a spike there, you got a spike there. All of them with the spike candles. Um, the back end resistance is right over here at just the high 7600 area. And, you know, so this all plays into uh, the convoluted pricing that we have, like this down here, this over here. Um, this is a basically kind of a failed head and shoulders inverted, but it was truncated, if you remember what I put in the last video. So that had less value. It means that the geometry wasn't as pure. Um, there are many reasons for this and why this has a higher probability of failure, which it kind of has done. It's gone all the way back down to here. Um, now, where do we stand as far as this geometry goes? Well, when you get failed patterns, that's actually a positive. A negative can turn into a positive. Um, I'm not sure if any of you guys uh, remember your algebra classes uh, way back in the day, but uh, there's some interesting ways that work, right? Um, when you put two negatives together and you get a positive and so forth, if you remember that. Um, well, that's, the, that's what you want to see mathematically and just from a very basic perspective. Now, there's many different variables and elements that go into that, that, you know, for the trading realm, um, that have to do with volume and the way the price moves. It's kind of like its tempo, the way it dances around and the flow of it that give all kinds of indications of what's likely to occur. Now, uh, scenario number two, this is scenario number one, which I drew in that chart if you remember, um, is where we go down and we drop down to you know, lower numbers that can go as far as, let's see that, that uh, high, uh, 58 I believe or even 56 somewhere in this range here we can't say the exact number which it will go to but we have an idea uh, a calculation of what's possible now are we gonna drop down there or are we gonna make our last you know decline right here before we pump upwards I can't predict that I don't predict the future I'm not an astronomist. Stop telling me that I am or giving me credit or thinking that I, I am and so forth. Um, you know, that's going to boost my ego, and I don't need an ego. Uh, the market is naturally supposed to humble you and beat you down. And, um, you know, one of the things I say in the recent interview I did 
was uh, the market is like a woman. It, you, could, you have a choice. You can either be right or you can be happy. Now I choose to be happy. Um, and that's uh, basically to be profitable. Let's, let's, that's the analogy that I really meant by that. And, you know, so I'm not going to predict where we're going to, what, what's going to happen from here. But one of the scenarios has played out. And the minimum that we have is right up to here. Now, I understand the psychology of somebody going over and taking that information and saying, hmm, you know what? I'm going to close out all my shorts. Hell with this. I'm going way long. I've got clear targets above and whatnot. And that's what one person on, on the group has done. But what if we did drop all the way down to here? Um, you're taking a risk. You know, and I don't have the ability, as I just stated, to predict the future, what we're going to do. You know, what if we did drop all the way down there? You might be a little bit pissed off and whatnot, and everybody else is getting executions. You know, I think the next one's down around 6,100, where it clears off another 5% short or whatever. Um, you know, so do understand that. Uh, and, you know, you know, as long as you use the information I'm giving you as a guide, you know, then it's beneficial, if nothing else. You're, you're learning, even if sometimes you don't think that you are. You're paying attention to the market. And I do this, you know, every day, all day, all the time, and I've done it for years. So, you know, if you do the same, you're going to get some clues. You're going to, you know, and you don't have to be a wizard and, and uh, any of the disciplines that I am. Uh, you know, you can just have an innate understanding of the marketplace. Your mind is a wonderful thing. It's often underutilized or um, discounted as, uh, you know, it's the best computer you can ever get. You just have to accept it and the market for what it's giving you and not interfere with it by with what you want and your feelings and emotions. Um, that's why I'm always detached and I'm never worried about what the market's gonna do because I've always got a good plan based off of what it has done because I do the three things. I observe, I plan, and I execute. And that's it. It simplifies everything. But anyway, that, that's my whole point. So that's where we are. And we might go down here or we might stop here and we'll get that move up to the 7600 level and we'll be waiting for that. Looks good. Either way, it looks good. So that's my uh, my video for this, and I just want to give you a clear understanding, and uh, nobody freak out. You know, I'm going to figure out the Cornex spot. I have to understand on-site and off-site how it handles orders, because if off-site it has its programming code of where it's holding and storing the ledger of its orders, um, and then executes them on-site through the API through Bitmax then BitMEX just responds, and this is what I'm thinking it does, as executing orders, you know, buying and selling. It's binary in nature, um, which makes perfect sense, and that's what I think, you know, if I have to guess how these programmers from Israel work, uh, that they're going to work more along those lines, because um, that would be more simplex. Uh, the more complicated route, I doubt they would do because it would be too much work. But anyway, I'll, I'll find that out in the future. And I kind of have an idea that that's from what people are telling me. That's how it really works. Uh, so that's good, actually. And other than that, that's where we are. Now we have that bigger pattern that goes all the way back up here. And this could just shoot all the way back up there. People will be freaked out and they'll be like, what the fuck is going on? And you could probably thank those, uh, send Christmas cards to those Bit, Bitfinex guys or whatever. Uh, they have had clues uh, of where they'll start showing up in volume. And when they do cover their, their positions, it's going to probably be a big explosion upwards. I just don't know how far they can push it downwards. And that's not up to me. That's up to the market. And I don't care who's manipulating the market. I mean, whatever. You know, numbers happen. And that's regardless of people. And uh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. It looks pretty interesting. Things are good. 
Other than that, I hope you guys have a great week, and I'll update you again later in the week. And plus, there will be, a, you know, the interview I do for the, the website Smart Options. So stay tuned of that as well. And have a good one.